Hello, and thanks for joining us for today's video. In today's video, we're talking about horrible things that happened at Waffle House restaurants. Where we live, we don't have Waffle Houses, but we've dined there on vacation. We've always had pleasant experiences, and the food was good. But we found that there was an unusual amount of news stories about vicious crimes that happened in the restaurants. Have you ever had an unusual experience at one of their restaurants? Please tell us about it in the comments section. We'd love to hear about it. Before we start today's video, we want to talk about our amazing sponsor, Magellan TV. Whenever I'm bored, I check out Magellan TV's new releases section. Magellan TV is by far my favorite documentary streaming service. I love it because it's a good deal and it has a lot of fascinating documentaries. In fact, they have over 3,000 documentaries and 20 hours of new material is added every week. Recently, I just discovered a great documentary. If you like true crime that is stranger than fiction, then you have to check out Final Curtain. It starts off like a straightforward story. A theater personality is shot to death in his home. Initially, it is thought to be a robbery gone wrong. But what follows has more twists and turns than your typical crime movie. Of course, Magellan TV has documentaries and a ton of other genres like Earth, Space, and Current History. You should check out Magellan TV for yourself because they are giving criminally listed viewers 30 days of free service. To get this amazing offer, just go to try.magellantv.com slash criminally listed. Find something great to watch on Magellan TV today and help support criminally listed in the process. Number 3. Michael D. Bowman Michael Bowman served three tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. His job was to clear explosives from the road. One day, while clearing an explosive, Bowman was injured. He came back home with post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD. Several nights a week, he suffered terrible nightmares. Early on the morning of May 31st, 2014, 30-year-old Michael Bowman, his friend, 23-year-old Tyler Taylor, and his girlfriend, 28-year-old Chantal Mixon, stumbled into an Augusta, Georgia Waffle House restaurant. The trio was intoxicated. Witnesses said they were loud and obnoxious. That night, 43-year-old police officer Kevin Jordan was working as a security guard. Kevin was a father of seven and an ex-Marine who had been with the Griffin Police Department for four years. That night, he was off-duty and working security as a side job. Even though he was off-duty, he was dressed in a police uniform. Witnesses overheard Bowman, Taylor, and Mixon making threats and derogatory comments about Kevin. At the request of the restaurant's manager, at around 2.20 a.m., Officer Kevin Jordan ordered the group to leave the restaurant. As he walked Mixon out, she started yelling racial slurs at him and tried to physically assault him. Kevin attempted to arrest her in the parking lot, but she resisted as he put handcuffs on her and the pair fell to the ground. When Kevin was on his knees subduing Mixon, Bowman pulled out his 40 caliber pistol and shot the 43-year-old father of seven in the back five times, killing him. Bowman kept quietly shooting at random targets and bystanders. Kevin's brother, Raymond Jordan, had come to the restaurant to visit his brother and he was in the parking lot when the shooting started. Raymond was a civilian, but he had a permit to carry a gun. He fired several times at Bowman, and he shot him in the face. A Waffle House surveillance camera captured the whole incident. Bowman was taken to the hospital, and he survived his wound. Raymond Jordan was not charged with shooting Bowman. When asked about his actions after his brother's murder, Raymond Jordan said, I don't want to be bitter. My only regret, I didn't kill him. Bowman and Mixon were charged with felony murder. Mixon was also charged with felony obstruction. Michael Bowman went to trial in February 2017. During his trial, Bowman's lawyer argued that Bowman had PTSD and a traumatic brain injury from serving overseas. He was in a dissociative state when Kevin Jordan approached him and his military training kicked in. Bowman claims he doesn't remember the altercation. He says all he remembers is Kevin asking them to leave and then being shot by Raymond Jordan. However, he said he doesn't doubt they killed Kevin. The prosecution argued that Bowman didn't have PTSD and that years of anabolic steroid use had led to the attack. 
The jury deliberated for three hours. They found Bowman guilty but mentally ill of murder and assault. Bowman could have been sentenced to death. But the Spalding County District Attorney did not push for the death sentence. So on February 17, 2017, Michael Bowman was sentenced to life without parole. Two months later, Chantal Mixon pleaded guilty to obstruction of justice and disorderly conduct. She was sentenced to eight years with a minimum of three years of prison. At the time of this video, 40-year-old Michael Bowman is serving a sentence at the Hay State Prison in Tryon, Georgia. Number 2. Johnny Max Mount Johnny Max Mount was a former Mississippi firefighter. He had worked in Biloxi for 10 years until a 2002 traffic accident cut his career short. At 2.30 a.m. on Christmas Eve 2002, Mount was involved in a bizarre traffic incident. He was struck by a car while standing in the middle of US-49. He suffered a severe brain injury and he lost a limb. The driver wasn't considered at fault. It's unknown why Mount was in the middle of the road at the time, but he was never the same after the accident. Just after midnight on November 27, 2015, 45-year-old Johnny Mount visited a Biloxi area Waffle House. 52-year-old Julie Brightwell was working as a server that night. Brightwell had worked as a server at Waffle House for eight years, two years in that location. She was considered warm and friendly. That night she asked customers about their Thanksgiving, which many people celebrated hours earlier. Around 1 a.m., she noticed Mount smoking an e-cigarette in the restaurant and asked him to stop. An argument ensued between the two. Mount left the restaurant. Minutes later, he returned with a 9mm handgun. Brightwell saw Mount approaching her with the gun and she ducked behind the counter. He leaned over the counter and shot the 52-year-old server once in the head. She was taken to the hospital but died a short time later. Mount remained at the scene as police arrived. The police found his 9mm concealed under his shirt. He was charged with first degree murder. The Waffle House issued a statement. Julie was a friend to many as well as a valued member of the Waffle House team. She will be greatly missed. Our prayers are with her family, friends, co-workers and customers. The restaurant offered to counsel employees and reopen hours later. A candlelight vigil was held for Julie a week later. Her friends, family, and co-workers spoke of how caring and friendly she was with everyone. In June 2016, Mount pleaded not guilty to murder. Mount's trial was delayed multiple times over the preceding seven years. It was supposed to start in early 2017, but it kept getting pushed back by Mount's lawyers, who claimed he wasn't fit to stand trial due to his 2002 injury. They wanted Mount to be tested in a state hospital before he stood trial. He was held in jail until 2019 and then he was sent to the Mississippi State Hospital. The district attorney's office argued that Mount understood the situation and the evidence against him. A judge found that Mount could stand trial and set his trial to start in June 2022. However, there is no record of him going to trial. It is unclear what Johnny Mount's status is at the time of this recording. Number 1. Travis Jeffrey Reinking Travis Reinking was born in early 1989 in Morton, Illinois. Starting in 2014, when he was 25, his family noticed he was becoming more erratic. Two years later, he developed an unusual delusion. He believed that his girlfriend was singer Taylor Swift and she was stalking him. He claimed that Swift hacked into his phone and was harassing him. He also told co-workers that he bought Swift a $14,000 engagement ring and he was going to marry her. 
On one occasion, the police responded to a call as CBS parking lot where Reiking admitted that he owned guns and he wanted to die by suicide. In June 2017, Reiking barged into a public pool in a pink house coat and swam in his underwear. When lifeguards ordered him out of the pool, he flashed his genitals and screamed, I'm a man. The police did not arrest Reiking for the incident. Then in July 2017, Reiking scaled a security barrier at the White House. He wanted to meet then President Donald Trump, but he was stopped by the Secret Service. He said he was a sovereign citizen and it was his duty to inspect the White House grounds. He was charged with unlawful entry. The charges were dismissed after he served community service. After his run-ins with the law in August 2017, the police seized his firearms and revoked his firearms license in Illinois. But the police eventually released his guns back to his father, Jeffrey Ranking, on the condition that he didn't return them to his son. But Jeffrey didn't follow the orders and he gave the guns back to his son. In autumn 2017, Ranking left Illinois and settled in Nashville, Tennessee. Having experience with his father's crane operating business, Ranking found odd jobs working in construction, but he still had brushes with the law. On April 17th, Ranking visited a Nashville car dealership. He stole a key fob and took off with a car. He led the police on a short chase and he managed to lose them. The police used GPS to locate the car, but when they found it, no one was around. Since they didn't know the thief's identity, no arrests were made. Around 3 a.m. on April 22, 2018, 29-year-old Travis Ranking pulled his truck up to a Nashville area Waffle House. Other than a green jacket, he was naked. As Ranking walked towards the restaurant's entrance, he looked for a sign from God to complete what he thought was God's bidding. One of the first things he saw was a man wearing a hat with the number three on it. He interpreted the three as a sign that God was talking to him. He then pulled out an AR-15 from under his jacket and opened fire in the restaurant. After a burst of fire that lasted about 30 seconds, he ran out of ammo. When he went to reload, 29-year-old James Shaw Jr., a customer, jumped him and grabbed the barrel of the gun. Shaw wrestled the gun away from Ranking and threw it behind the counter. Ranking stripped off the jacket and ran out of the restaurant naked. The police arrived on the scene shortly afterward. Of the roughly 20 people in and just outside the restaurant during the shooting, four were injured and four were killed. All the victims were under 30 years old. The Ebony Gross was a 21-year-old social work major from Gallatin, Tennessee. She died at the restaurant. Aquila De Silva is 23 years old and he was studying musical engineering at Middle Tennessee State University. He was taken to the hospital, but nothing could be done for him and he died there. Joe Perez had recently moved to Nashville from Texas. The 20-year-old was fatally shot outside the restaurant. Doreen Sunderland was a 29-year-old Waffle House employee from Goodlettsville, Tennessee. He was also killed as he stood outside the building. Ranking's abandoned car was found in the parking lot. When the police looked into his records, they identified him as a suspect. SWAT teams, helicopters, canines, and over 160 officers were used to search for Ranking. 34 hours later, he was found in a wooded area. He had a black backpack and a loaded handgun with him. The police arrested him without any struggle, but he refused to give any statements to the authorities. Travis Ranking was charged with four counts of first-degree murder. In August 2018, a mental evaluation found that Ranking was not fit for trial. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia and placed in the Middle Tennessee Mental Health Facility. Eventually, a judge deemed him fit for trial, and in February 2019, he pleaded not guilty. A year later, prosecutors announced that they would not seek the death penalty against him. 
The rankings trial started in January 2022, nearly four years after the murders. The trial lasted five days. The jury deliberated for about five hours. They found Travis Rankin guilty of all the charges against him, including four counts of first-degree murder. Members of the jury hugged James Shaw Jr., the man who stopped the rampage as they left the courtroom. Travis Rankin was sentenced to life in prison without the chance of parole a week later. In May 2022, Travis's father, Jeffrey Rankin, was found guilty of providing weapons to his son. He claimed he didn't know that his son was under psychiatric evaluation at the time. Jeffrey filed a motion to reconsider after feeling his attorney was ineffective. His trial will continue into 2023. James Law Jr., who stopped the shooting, was treated as a hero. Tennessee lawmakers recognized him as a hero, and his school, Tennessee State University, set up a scholarship in his name. Shaw even started a GoFundMe to raise money for the victims. He eventually raised $230,000 for the victims' families. At the time of this video, 34-year-old Travis Ranking is serving a sentence of the Morgan County Corrections Department in Morgan County, Tennessee. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please don't forget to check out our new channel, Paranormally Listed. There's a link on the screen now, and there's a link in the description box below this video. Well, that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.